Futera presents Soccer Cards and Chill. Hello, welcome back to Soccer Cards and Chill. I'm Adam Partington. That there's Mark Watson. He's going to do his traditional hello now. Go on, Mark. Hi, Adam Partington. Nah, don't be silly. Hey, off Adam Partington. <laughs> <laughs> I actually look forward to this all week. I look forward to that bit of the podcast every week. Um, it's but a good yeah, bit. It's, it's a good bit. It's it's starting to great. <laughs> uh, we're going to continue to do it though. So for those of you who don't know, Soccer Cards and Chill is a podcast dedicated to uh, the game of football slash soccer and mm-hmm. also uh, to the hobby of collecting soccer cards. Futera, the company that, that Mark and I work for, have been in this space for about 30 years. We've been producing sports cards. Uh, so we like to think that we know what we're talking about. But just in case we don't, we get on different collectors and investors every week uh, to speak about the, the hobby, uh, mainly collectors, I'd say. Uh, this week's episode, we're going to be talking to Vince from Card Hour in, in shortly. But before that, Mark and I are going to be talking about football managers, Mark. Uh, current Premier League managers, to be more precise. I want to get your thoughts on favorite subjects. Being, heads. being a, good, that's good. Then that's uh, that's convenient. Being a West Ham fan, what your what your thoughts currently are on on Frank Lampard? Because at the time of filming this, he's not having the the best time of it, is he? As, as Chelsea manager, what's Frank Lampard got to do with West Ham? You know what he's got to do with West Ham. You guys were incredibly <laughs> harsh I'd, to him. I'd, I'd I'd forgotten about it, mate. I'd forgotten about it. Um, he's. Uh... I don't, you know what? I, I actually like Frank. I, I, I'm I've, I'm a fan, if you like. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of West Ham, Frank, I don't think. But I also think he was no. treated really badly by us. Um, I'm a fan of him as a, when he was a player. I think that this is a really difficult job. Like I know it's not it's his first job, but it pretty much is. It's his first major job. Um, and it's a hard gig. Like... It's all well and good people turning around and saying, oh, yeah, he's, like, he's been given 200 million to spend. But you've also got to learn how to spend 200 million. Just because we can sit in a pub or sit on our couch and say, oh, you should buy this player and you should buy this player. Like, there's a lot more to it than just that. And it's about personalities and it's about how people bed in and how people that come from foreign countries come into England. And do they settle down and learn the language? Do they like the culture? Do they miss home? All those things as human beings come into why someone doesn't perform. And I've got a feeling that Chelsea just need some time to gel. And if I was a Chelsea fan, I'd want Frank to sort of stay and be part of that. He's a club legend. It's always a, like a real risk to bring in a club legend as a coach because you worry that the people that loved him are going to turn on him. And I think for Chelsea, it's really important that Frank Lampard doesn't get turned on. And I think he's got to be given a bit of time to sort of get these players to sort of settle in at Chelsea. Look, it's not a disaster, but it's not looking great at the moment for him. And it would be it would be a lot better if they a few more points. As a West Ham fan, like brilliant. I love it. <laughs> this is with what the same points or three points behind them. I would have taken that all day long if somebody had offered it to me. Um especially knowing who they'd signed. They were probably my favourite to win the league this year, I think. So he hasn't performed, but mm, he needs a bit of time to gel. Yeah, people people were talking about the potential. He's, I, I, I think he's going to be a great manager. Like He had a brain on him. He knew what he was doing as a player and he was dedicated and he, he put in the time to train. He was always out on the training pitch. All the stories that you hear about him. He seems like a good guy. Um, I actually met him really briefly many, many years ago when he was a young footballer. I think he was just finding his feet. It was very quick in a nightclub one time. It uh, seems like a, a lifetime ago. Um, but yeah, I think he was just finding his feet in his career then. But he was a young lad and to see him come through and see what he's done now, I just think like we've got to give him some time because I think he could be a great. And the one thing we never do in England is give coaches time and the media always gives them stick for how badly they do. But you've got to learn like the job at the same time. So I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm, I'm not a fan of early days at West Ham or every time that he like celebrated in front of our fans, every time he scored a goal against us, which was pretty much every game that he played. Um, but I am a fan as a person and as a, as a coach. And I hope he does well. So I'm sort of lying. Yeah. I'm sort of, I'm yeah, sort of being polite there. Right? <laughs> I, I, I heard, I heard Jamie Carragher talking about the other day and he was, he was saying, uh, you know, like how, how 
he wouldn't want Gerard to take the Liverpool job now without like uh, a, another, without more experience. And and um, you know, he said like for example for Arteta and for for Lampard, you know, taking and to a certain extent Solskjaer as well, you know, taking on those jobs without any like real experience to fall back on. Um, so you know, Gerard's probably out of those four is actually is actually doing the best in terms of what he's going to be able to have. Uh, to, to show when he decides to leave Rangers, which is ironic um, because come I, on, I know man. I know it's no no it's the Scottish United, League. I get United, that. No, I don't mean that. I mean United are top. United are no, top. Yes, of the Premier no, League. no, yeah, they, they are. They are. We'll we'll come on to Solskjaer in a second though. Yeah. The point I'm making there though is Carragher. Carragher was talking about how he 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 worries about these lads. Okay, Solskjaer's doing all right at the moment. At the moment. But, um, yeah. you know, he worries about them. when they get into pickles, they haven't got that experience to lean on. Um, mm. do, do you think it's fair when people say that people like Lampard, uh, Arteta, not so much, but, but Lampard uh, especially, that he is getting a bit of a free pass because of who he is and the career that he's had? No, I don't. You know what? When he was a player, ads, everyone said he was getting a free pass because of who his dad was. And... I remember Harry Redknapp once saying Harry Redknapp once saying that he um, he'd go on to be like the best midfielder in the country if you just gave him a chance if you gave him time and he proved he was like maybe not the best midfielder in the country but he wasn't far off um, he turned into a great player and I don't think in this day and age of the money that's involved in the game that you can just turn around and say oh he's going to get a free pass because of who he is like he went to Derby he did a decent job at Derby he's gone to Chelsea he is a legend but also. He's got to bed in a little bit, and I'm guessing his football knowledge is sort of second to none. At some point, all the great managers started somewhere. That's Ancelotti started somewhere. Uh, Mourinho yeah, was yeah. the translator for Bobby Robson. Like, did someone turn around to him and go, Oh, well, he shouldn't go into his first job? He won the Champions League with Porto. Like, this is like insane. Like, that people start their career, they've got to learn it, and then they're going to become great. If I was going to put money on it, I'd say that Frank Lampard will become a great coach manage England one day, definitely win the Premier League and go from there. I'm being polite about him because obviously I'm a West Ham fan. There's obviously that background that I sort of, um, there's obviously that slight animosity with every West Ham fan and, and Frank Lampard. But yeah, I, I still think he's going to become a, a great manager, just not a West Ham. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Solskjaer, um, he's a strange one because I, I, when Man United fans were kicking off about him as they frequently go through little, they go up and down with social relationship with him, it seems to, there was a bit of me that was, that thought like, I, I kind of, I've never really looked at his, his entire time at Man United and thought he was, he was ever really doing that bad. I think if you listen to Man United fans, you think he was, but he wasn't really when you looked at like the side they had and he's been building there over the past two years, but he's got them into a position now where that, the, you know, that the, the, the top of the league, the time of recording um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure they're going to go on and win it but how would you how would you assess his job at Man United Mark what would you give him out of 10 I think that anybody that takes the Man United job is basically taking a poison chalice like it's a horrible job to take because what you're basically still doing is just still trying to emulate the greatest coach of all time like nobody yeah. remembers the in-betweens. Like David Moyes is a great manager and he's proven again he's a great manager, but he went to Man United and most would see it as a disaster because he wasn't Sir Alex Ferguson. Like everybody who's Van Gaal went there and like literally one of the greatest managers in history, but he's not Alex Ferguson. And so in that case, like people look down on what he did. Mourinho had an awful squad got them to second place. People laughed when he said, my biggest achievement is getting to second yeah, place. And now we should look at it and go, wow, like that's incredible. Your biggest achievement was getting it to second place yeah. because it like, this is a really tough job. And now you're looking and thinking, well, Solskjaer, everybody moans on the outside, the media more. I haven't seen too many Man United fans, real Man United fans moaning because he's a legend. He's God at, at Man United. Um, but you've got, the media sort of giving him sticks and he doesn't know what he's doing. He's almost become a sort of meme to the Premier League and just like from nowhere, he's now top of the Premier League. Like silently, he's like pulled out those results. Like I can't remember, it, the, he hasn't lost an away game for so often. I can't remember if he has now, but up until the West Ham game, he hadn't lost an away game for some ridiculous amount of nine months or something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And he's still got the record, hasn't he? He's not. He's he's not still and, and he was scoring... 
he was one nil down in like seven games in a row or something ridiculous. I'm making that number up. But it's something ridiculous. And then still winning the games. Like that shows yeah. character. That shows like fight. People are moaning tactical, that the first tactical half. Tactical no yeah, I, I just, as well to get your team out of that mess. Like, yeah, no, Yes. Uh, I think that we're really underestimating Solskjaer. A strange, he was a strange one to bring into the club because I don't think he really had the experience. Um, but I think he's proved everyone wrong, including me. I, I, I thought it was a ridiculous decision to bring him in. I think he's proven everybody wrong. And if I was a Man United fan right now, I'd be well happy. Like I, I'd be really, really happy. They're probably a couple of signings away from a really great side at the moment. And um, fair play. I, I, I reckon they win the league. As I know you just said you don't think it will. I think they do. I think they win the league. Um, I sort of... I can't, I can't say bias, but and I know you won't like it, but I, I'd prefer Liverpool to win the league. Um, got more of an affection towards Liverpool, even though I'm a West Ham fan. Um, but I think it's going to be tight. I think it will be, it will be City, Liverpool, or Man United, and I like it that there's three teams in it now. Really, this one is more. There's more. There's Tot- I mean, there's if you Tottenham look at it, in there as well, as it stands, as it stands today, there's Tottenham. Well, uh, uh, you've got all right. Everton aren't going to win the league, but but we're, we're we've got more points than Tottenham. Like I think we're three. I think we're level on points with Liverpool now. Um, you're making it. You're making it difficult for people. So that's exactly. That's, exactly. I, th- I, th- that's, I think. I think. I think you're on 29. I think Liverpool on 33. So I think you're a little bit behind. But uh, all right. Or maybe I, 32. I, I, no, I think. I think. All right. Okay. Maybe it's three points. But the point. The point there though is we're, we're still in the conversation. Yeah. We're not in the serious conversation. And whether or not we'll still be in the conversation in April is is yeah. I, I'm not sure. But I, I think. Yeah, I think it's good. The point again, though, the point on that one is it's great to see so many teams at the pro- top of the Premier League at this point in the season, still within distance, you know, of, of there's probably six teams in there that are still in consideration, some of them more serious than others. But yeah, it's brilliant cool. season. It's brilliant season, Ed. So I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And it's like I didn't think when I first started watching this year without the fans there and the atmosphere on TV rubbish. It sounds a bit like a game of FIFA. I'm guessing it's the, the crowd noises from FIFA. Um, but it's really enjoyable. The amount of goals, VAR is messing up the whole thing. But other than that, it's really enjoyable. Like I'm enjoying it at the moment. West Ham are on right. tomorrow at three at three p.m. That's the first time in a year, I think. So uh, I'll it? be enjoying that. Yeah, that, ten months or something ridiculous. I'll be enjoying that <laughs> nice three p.m. kickoff, which means I don't have to go to bed ridiculously late. Uh, Ralph Husenhaltel. Um, I don't know if I've pronounced his surname right. I never know if I get it right. Ralph Husenhaltel. Anyway. Um, He's he's done a terrific job at Southampton. I think I got to make the case that pound for pound he might be arguably the best manager in the league. Uh, not that he is, you know, obviously Jurgen Klopp and and, and Mourinho and, and Ancelotti are in there in terms of what they've won. But I think if you look at like the job he's done with the side he has, that you know what he's done with players like Ward Prowse and Armstrong and stuff. Uh, you know he's done he's done an exceptional job there. Got that result against Liverpool the other week. I think uh, he's a, he's a very underrated manager. I think. Biggest, biggest overachiever. I think that's probably the best way to say it because they haven't got the side to be in that position. I, like if you look across it on paper, Danny Ings is, is a great striker, but he's not a top six striker in my opinion. And that was proved when he went I to Liverpool. I think he is. No, think I think I'll... he is. I, th- I think Danny Ings, I think Danny Ings is, 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 is it, he, it's a, it's a bit of a mismatch that he's playing for, for, for Southampton I think Danny Ings is absolutely mustard in fact his numbers if you go back and look at his numbers Mark like they they line up against the likes of you know the the, the, the top strikers in the league uh, when yeah. you consider the, the the support that he gets the supply he gets the teams that he has to play in not so much now because I've just mentioned you know a player that's terrific and gets in you know some assists but I, I I mean, he's very, very good, Mark. And the, the issue with Liverpool, remember, he got that really bad injury and then he was like down the pecking order and he was competing against likes of Mo Salah. And, you know, yeah, he did boys. get an injury. Exactly, exactly. It's For me, Ward Prowse is the one that I just think he's brilliant. Set pieces, I, everything about him. I think he's a class player, absolute class act. Um, yeah, no, I, I, it's enjoyable. I, I always love it when a team comes from nowhere and does really well. Um, a bit like West Ham this year. Uh I think Southampton look great and it's, it's enjoyable watching the ride. Basically. Um, I'm not going to try and say his name. So Ralph. Let's just call him Ralph. Hassan 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 Hassan. Hassan. That's my, 
Ralph. Ralphie. 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 Big Ralph. Um, he uh, he's doing a good job, and uh, we should commend him. It's um, they're sort of uh, harking back to sort of Leicester days when Leicester won the league. He's sort of getting he's getting those kind of performances out of them, which is just really impressive. So yeah, big fan, mate. Like like Southampton this year, um, mate. It's a good. It's a really good season. Really really good season. So yeah, enjoying it so far. What's uh, what's the latest on trading cards, mate? What's going on in uh, in the world of trading cards this week with you? Well, uh, well, uh, last night I appeared on the uh, Soccer Cards United podcast with uh, with Jason, um, which was a which was a, a brilliant conversation. I was on the other end of the uh, I was on the receiving end of the the questions for that podcast. Really enjoyed that. Um, you know, had a had a very open and frank conversation about where we want to take things at Futera. Um, nice. You were your name was dropped in a couple of times. Jason was talking about how historically he's found it. Uh, he's wanted to speak to people from Futera before and found it quite hard to track them down. Uh, we 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 made a joke, you know, about how, how cryptic some of the you know the messages are. How to identify who's in in it actually works for the company. And if you get all the cards together, then they make your face and then you know who to, who to seek, you know, the, those kind of things. Uh, so uh, yeah, we had, we had a good conversation. And, and as I said, you know, I was very frank about where I want to take Futera. I want us to be, um, you know, a bit of a, 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 a you know, a, an open, an open door in the sense that, collectors, the people who buy our products, who are passionate about our products can come to me um, and come to us and uh, be, you know, be frank about what they like, what they would like to see. Of course, you know, I was, I was honest and said that we can't always, you know, you can't listen to everybody and we have our own parameters that we have to work to with the licenses that we've got. Um, but I think that I, I sense Mark that uh, people kind of appreciate that now from Futera. Uh, the fact that we're able to speak openly and candidly about what we do. We're very, we've got these very, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 values that we kind of live as, as a company as well without using too much kind of cliche marketing speak. Uh, and I think one of the things that I, I did say to him was about the products that we produced down the, in, in the past because what Jason said is he observed that we were, I mean, I referred to us as, as an alt trading card company, an alternative trading card company in the yeah. sense that you know, you've got your your two main boys, which we accept, especially in Europe and, and the state. We've, we've, we've cool, kind of so. ran... We've got our audience in, in in China, but we've 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 tried to do new things, and we're very and we take these projects on, and we and we run them for the entirety of their course. And he he was asking me about that, and I said actually that's kind of represents us as individuals. If you think about the people that work within the company, you know, yeah. and their personalities, uh, you know, that comes out in our in our products. I think. I think it's um, like this platform here adds a sort of given us the ability to actually have a little bit of a voice, which is the same across the board now with, with the trading card industry. Just We're thankful for sort of YouTube and being able to talk about it every week. And I know that for quite a while, we've sort of talked about wanting to have a podcast or a show like this, where we can sort of talk about not just trading cards, but also football and show a bit of the personality behind the brands. Because I think that's one of the best bits about it is that there, there is a personality behind the brands. There is an absolute and utter love for what we do and every time that there's a new product comes out it, this these products are born from a frenzy of excitement within the office like this isn't just like oh well we have to do this and we have to release this now and we have to like, i'm sure as the collectors will see like we don't have this strict schedule throughout the year of this release is here this release is here we release as the ideas grow and as like as we come we can come up with the best products that we possibly can and i really love that about what we do um um, as a someone in the trading card industry, I'm massively thankful to the two big boys like Panini and Tops. They do a great job. And part of what we want to do on this is talk about what they're doing just as much as what we're doing, because it's it's really interesting to see just how far the, the hobby's going. And um, it does give us even more of a platform as it does with any other trading card company, just to sort of there's enough room for everybody, I think. But yeah, I think like as in for when we started this, it's really important to us that we do have a bit of a voice now and that we're going on to podcasts and we're talking to collectors and distributors and people like that and answering the questions that they've always wanted basically. And um, as we go, we'll, we've got some really exciting stuff coming out. And so this gives us perfect platform to actually talk about that as well, Eds. And uh, like I know we keep on saying in a couple of weeks, but it's really close now. We've uh, got a new website that's launching very soon and it will be launching with new products new licenses as well which is really really exciting can't say any more than that but i think 
depends on what day this goes out. If this goes out on Saturday, then I think it's the Wednesday after all will be available, all will be uh, revealed. And it's some really exciting, cool stuff that we're doing at the moment. So uh, yeah, can't wait to just get started and, uh, and show everybody what we're doing. But great stuff. Well, absolutely. Let's uh, let's let's have, let's play this conversation that I had with Vince from Card Hour, and then we'll come back and uh, we will talk about some of the other cards that we've produced in the past. Vincent, Vincent from Card Card Hour. Um, how you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Good, good, good. We were just uh, we were just talking off camera there. Well, on camera, but before I hit record <laughs> about that that Andalek shirt in the background. You got some cool signatures on there, I believe. Who was it again? Yeah. You got, did you say you got um, company on there? Yeah, company and Tillmans are the are the main ones, I would say. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. Company and, and Tillmans. What a player Vincent Company was. Is, is was. He's, he has retired now, hasn't he? Because I know he went back to yeah. Anderlecht for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's the he's the head coach now from Anderlecht, though. So. How's he getting on? Uh, it's 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 getting better. It was uh is not was not looking very good at the, at the beginning of the season at the end of last season. Uh, but it's 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 getting better. Good. Well, that's good to hear because he is, if any player deser- is deserving of a decent managerial career, it's Vincent Company. Like he always struck me as the type of guy that would go on to be a manager. So I hope yeah. it goes well for him. Um, I was watching one of your videos the uh, earlier doing my research as any good uh, interviewer should do and you <laughs> mentioned your you've got kind of two passions and and like one of them soccer and then one of them's world war ii i am also um a a a big world war ii fan in the sense of yes. like it's a strange it seems like a strange thing yeah. i'm a fan of world war ii <laughs> i mean yeah. in, the, in the sense of i'm intrigued by world war ii i have yeah. uh, lots of different books a, a great book by the way all how uh, all how let loose by um Max Hastings is a brilliant book on World War II if you haven't read it. Uh, so, uh, but you you were talking about that you were looking for like cards of players that have, that, that were like around in World War II. Where where's where's that come from? Well, everyone was talking about vintage as you have to collect, you have to invest in vintage, and you have to have vintage and all that stuff. And I was like, I actually never looked into vintage because I mean, I wasn't around, which is one. Um, but two, I never. For some reason, I never linked linked soccer to World War II for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, and then I was like, maybe I can buy into vintage as my own personal collection, not really as an investment, but more as a personal collection and get into vintage because it always intrigued me because it's so much more difficult to find info and, and sets were released in different countries. And you have, there's so much more going on in vintage. Also with the backstories, some of these backstories are just, amazing it's it's something you never hear about anymore it's like with the world war you're not, you're not even sure if you're going to play the next game because of mm. bombs and all that stuff so the dynamic was totally different so i was starting to look into it and then i i was thinking like what if i can find players that played during the second world war or any connection with world war ii uh, and start collecting those so that's I, that's what i've been doing for the last two three weeks yeah um so yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, that that's 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 really that's really cool. I, I think uh, yeah, the whole that whole period and, and the the impact that it had on football. So obviously, you know, football stopped. Incidentally, I'm an Evertonian, and one of the um, one of the the facts about Everton is is that we I think we won the league both times. So we won the league before World War One broke out, the season before World War One broke out, and then we won the league yeah. the season before World War Two broke True. out. So yeah. if if in England. So if if Everton win the league again, we should all be incredibly worried. Uh, <laughs> because it maybe means that another world war is coming. Um but uh, no, yeah, it's, it, I, I agree with you. It's really fascinating because a lot, you know, a Remembrance Day here in here in, in the UK, um, when the games around Remembrance Day, Everton always kind of like, and all the clubs do this, they pay homage to like the players that, that they lost in World War Two. And apparently yeah. that, I mean, I don't, I can't give you any names, but I've heard anecdotal stuff before of like football historians talking about um, that period and like a lot of good players were lost in World War II you know lads that would have probably gone down in, in footballing history just never yeah. made it back and that's that's quite sad you know you do think about what the great players that may have may have perished in in, in those conflicts both of the conflicts um, so uh, what what team what team do you support is, uh, is, uh, is it a giveaway the, the teams behind you yeah the the one on the on the right is a giveaway yeah so for <laughs> international football it's definitely Chelsea Mm-hmm. Um, 
in Belgium is Antwerp, which is my local club. It's, it's actually the, the stadium is down the road. I wasn't able to go and watch them play in the Europa League against Tottenham, which we won 1-0 too. Uh, but yeah, it's it's what it is. Uh, but those are the, my two main clubs, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm asking that as if, like, I don't know. We, we had that conversation <laughs> before I hit record. Yeah. I found it in, intriguing, though. Um, do, you, do you collect uh, cards? Because being a Belgian, do, do you do you kind of, like, go after cards, players of your... Do you have a soft spot for, like, your Lukaku's and your Hazards and whatever because they share the same nationality as you? Uh, it's not really because I have the same nationality. It's more because I believe in them as a player, um, especially Lukaku and Kevin De Bruyne, even Mertens. Uh, those are the players I, I just like from a, from a football perspective. Not some, it doesn't have to do anything with them being Belgium. If they were African or German, I would <laughs> I would buy them anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really I don't really have those kinds of soft spots. Like I have to own or collect players from my own team or from my own country. I, I don't have that. Nah, yeah, I like it. So what what's what's your story then, Vincent? How did you how did you get into to collecting soccer cards? How did you get into like doing a YouTube channel for this? Uh so my journey started in last March. So from last year, uh, I'm I'm actually a professional uh, sports better. So I bet on sports for a living. Pro- uh, a professional. Yeah, professional. Oh, that's that's wow. my day to day job. I would say. I thought um, that I had a cool job now when I get to tell people that I, I'm part <laughs> of manager for me, Terry, but you've just outdone me there, I think. Yeah, it's, it sounds fancy, but yeah, it's, uh, every, every job has its downsides, right? Mm. Um, so, not yeah, mine, because... not mine, just in case the boxes <laughs> are listening. So, um, yeah, obviously last year, all sports disappeared. There was nothing to bet on anymore. Um, so, I... I I was watching YouTube and I, I wish I remember what video it was, but they were talking about cards. Um, so I start. it was not Gary V because a lot of people got in because of Gary V or any one of these influencers. I, I mean, I cannot tell you which video it was. I wish I remembered, but it was not Gary V. Um, so I, I start looking into it. And of course, being from Europe, I used to collect stickers when I was younger. Um, so I, I kind of recognized what was going on, but I, they were talking about investing and making money and a, a market booming and all that stuff. I was like, <laughs> what's going on? I need to look more into this. So that's, that's where it got started. I started looking more into cards and there was an opportunity. I mean, there were so many cards from soccer that were like $2, $3. And I was like, how can a basketball card be a thousand and a soccer card, which is still the, the most watched sport in the world, can be two dollars and that was and i'm talking players like messi ronaldo mbappe because back then they were like one dollar two dollars three dollars you could pick them up for like barely nothing even even in march so i i asked people like should should i should i buy into it because i i knew the players but i knew nothing about the product i knew nothing about the market so my first question obviously was what why are these two dollars i mean doesn't make sense and people were telling me, no, don't invest in soccer cards, or at least not yet. It's too early. It's 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 gonna take years and years before they start to pop off. And whenever whenever some someone says that to me, I start buying like crazy because that means it's basically overlooked. If it's that cheap from the most watched sports, then then I'm going in. So that's when I start buying into it. Um, and then the YouTube channel came not long afterwards I, I felt there was like a lack of good information out there about the sport for one uh, so I started talking more about the sport and stickers not really the, the cards I never talked about by this player or by that player uh, I was more talking about um, how the sport works like the different leagues the different cups uh, just the sport itself because I, I felt like there was a lot of and especially, I'm not bashing Americans, but Americans were talking about soccer like they knew what was happening, and they actually had no idea what was happening. Um, I, I, um, by the way, I, I got into a bit of trouble about this, and I, I, I did, I like you there, you know, I, I genuinely didn't mean to single out yeah, Americans, of course. But, but I shared, I chopped down a clip that I, when I had the conversation with Jamie Salt, which is the first soccer cards and show <laughs> that I did. Jamie's a great guy, and we spoke about this, and, yeah. and it, it was, it wasn't because I've, I've got friends who are, Amer- who are, who are sure. American who, are, are being an Evertonian, you know, lots of uh, American Evertonians who can talk as fluently about the game as I can. Sure. The point I was making is I'd seen 
Americans who were more focused historically on basketball and American football, switching to soccer, as they would call it, um, yeah. and we do as well, and, 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 and then just making recommendations to people. And I was like, that's not right. You can't, you, you can't yeah. tell people to, to do that. So that's, I'm glad let you me, let me that refer, let me, Yeah, let me rephrase that. There were a lot of people on YouTube talking about cards that maybe shouldn't be talking about soccer. Or yeah, some of them happen to be American. There's also lots yeah, of other it was but I get you. Sure, get you. sure. Um, so I, I was I, I've obviously being from Belgium, English is not my my main language. I I, I speak, you speak French. You speak better English than me. Than English. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, you do. Uh, you do. Yeah, thank I speak you. terrible English, and I can't even fall back on French. <laughs> so I, I i did podcasts in in dutch without the camera so i never was on youtube um and i was like maybe i sh i should do this just for my personal development uh be more comfortable in front of the camera and develop my english more because yeah i mean it, there's always a time to learn uh so that's when i just started making videos i was just rambling on and, and then <laughs> pulling up my best english trying to educate people because i i my mentality going in, in this was the more people I educate and actually understand the sport, the more will stay. Because I think a lot of people who come into cards and they're not really sure what to buy or they're not really sure what it actually is about because it's not as in, in the NBA. You have the NBA, you have the playoffs and that's it. In, in, in football, you have five main leagues. You have the Champions League, Nations League, Europa League. You have so many different leagues. They're all connected. Some are international. So I, I felt like there was a lot of confusion and... Um, there was still a lot of things that were uncovered, like, and just talking about cards and why you should buy a card doesn't help anyone because at the end of the day, if they listen to your advice, they have no idea when to sell. They have no idea what to look for in the future. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to cover all those things with my videos. Um, and I felt like I had the knowledge to talk about the players. Uh, so the more I talked about the players and the more videos I made, the better I understood the market. Um, so yeah, that's that's where it all got started. What what do you make to this whole um, investors slash collectors uh, uh, tribalism that sometimes plagues the industry, or I sense it does, or have done in the past. It's not so yeah. pronounced in in Europe, I don't think. But um, uh, and and if you were to fall on either side of the fence, which which side of the fence would you fall on? Are you an investor or are you a collector? Yeah, I feel like I feel like. It, it has to be one or the other and i think both are fine there's a, there's obviously a place for both um I, I i don't categorize myself because if i want to sell if i buy something then i will flip it for the right price um i obviously have like the cards i'm buying right now from the world from the war i, I would i wouldn't sell them but for like other cards and stickers i i would i would buy them to resell later and then that's why I don't put myself in one category because at the end of the day, I think anyone and everyone would sell a card for the right price. I would, I would assume if you have some kind of deep emotional connection to it, of course, and it's different. Uh, but if you have to choose between owning a piece of cardboard or selling it to pay for rent or to pay or whatever the case may be that you have financial problem in real life, then I guess you're going to sell that card. I mean, mm. a card is not going to do you any good if you live on the street. Um, so, um, kind of rival. Yeah. I kind of understand why collectors get mad right now. And I had this, I, I was buying Donruss boxes for $60. I mean, months ago, and now it's like 500. I don't even know. I don't even looked it up because it's super expensive. So I kind of get it that even if you're only a collector, like you, collecting with your, with your children, right? Not right now is basically unaffordable. If you want to buy five boxes, then you're going to pay a thousand dollars and, yeah, it's just for collecting purposes. So I, I kind of get that collectors get mad that it became so expensive. But at the same time, the collection of those collectors have gone up in value. So, I mean, I kind I kind of get that there is a thing from both sides. I'm fine with either. I'm, 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 and everyone and anyone has its place. And as long as it's helping the market grow as a whole, then I, I guess I'm cool with it. Yeah, because there's also the thing as well. Neem Patel brought this up to me. Um, he he had an example of someone who he'd spoken to who was historically a car, just a collector, as yeah. I was holding all of these valuable cards as the boom hit. 
great. Yeah. And then he'd always wanted to go to some, I think it was like somewhere like, like Croatia and he was able to take his family oh, yeah. to create. I know who it is. Croatia. Yeah. I talked to the guy as well. Yeah. Great. So, and that, that's, that, that's brilliant. And also um, he said, and I hadn't considered this. He said, well, you know, what, what does happen sometimes is um, people will sell their cards um, to improve their own collection. So you're a collector, sure. you've always wanted this card. Now all of a sudden you've got three cards that you're not as fond of. You're able to sell them and buy the card that you may that may have been unattainable before. Um, sure. So that's interesting as well. So I think, yeah, you know, I think as a as a uh, from the publisher publisher's perspective, from Peterra's perspective, see, we've always catered to to the collector. We're not looking at this for investors yeah. per se. Um, you know, and that's 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 always been the, the mainstay of our focus. But you've got to—I I appreciate that. You know, things have kind of changed a little bit, and there are people entering into the space that want to buy the cards to to invest and potentially, potentially sure. sell on. It's an interesting it's an interesting debate. Um, go on. You got something you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I just think a lot of people are just too focused on being one or the other instead of just being fine with with both of them. You know, it's like as you said, some. It's like if you have five cards of the same, why wouldn't you sell four of them, keep one, and buy, and then with that money, buy the one card you are not able to afford or cannot afford? It's like it doesn't make sense to keep five of them for a collection. For, uh, from from my perspective, if you just keep one, the best looking one, sell the other four, or if they're great, it's just sell the four and an upgrade. That that would make the most sense to me. Obviously, everyone does what he wants to, and I'm, as I said, there's no right or wrong. But I, I, I get why, would, why people would sell their collection or, mm. or try to level up, I would say. It's, I think it's fine. How are you currently navigating this, this boom then, Vincent? Um, what types of things are you, are you looking for at the moment? How, you know, how, you, how, you, how are you riding the, the current sports card wave? So, as, as, as I said, right now, I'm buying a lot of vintage cards. Um, and the, the, the main thing I'm doing right now is looking back on that period from March till August and a bit, be, be, um, yeah, a bit back, just to understand the market. So when it, whenever hap- something like that happens again, or just trying to understand the dynamic, I'm not m- buying much um, modern cards. I just try to understand it, and I'm just watching the market. What are other people buying? What are other content creators talking about? It's just more of an observation period for me right now because in six months' time, hopefully, we have the Euros. Uh, so I, I guess it's going to be around the same as the NBA playoffs of last season when they were in the bubble. Um, so I just right now try to understand the market and try to find a direction where I can go from right here because obviously I also invest to flip. Uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't like that word, but I just like to buy cards with the, the main goal to make money of them. Um, so I just try to understand the market right now. Here's a question, and it's one that I haven't asked to any other uh, guest that we've had on Soccer Cards and Chill. What sure. impact is the coming European Championships going to have on the hobby, in your opinion? It's obviously hard to say because... It's it's again the pandemic is something unique for for what we have seen. Uh, I th- I guess no one could have ex- have, have um, predicted that it would be mo- August. Um, I, I I do think because we saw what happened in August um, that obviously the Euros are the sec- from from my perspective the second biggest international tournament behind the uh, the World Cup. Um, we we saw what happened during the Champions League play, uh, knockout stages from last year. I mean, players who were still in the tournament went up like crazy. Uh, Mbappé cards went through the roof, especially the Prism cards. Neymar cards were going through the roof. Lewandowski cards were going through the roof. Um, so I think um, the more we get towards the Euros, the higher the price is going to be. And I think it's going to be around the same as the NBA playoffs. Teams that progress to the next round their card prices will continue to go up because they have a higher chance of winning the tournament the more they future into it the the uh the cards from the players that get eliminated will drop in value um and i think the the at the end of the day there's always going to teams like england who receive a lot of hype because everyone wants all the english fans wants english to do english team to do good so i think a lot of teams will get high to 
hyped up. A lot of content creators will talk about the euros. I will, I will talk about the euros. Um, so I think prices are going to go up a lot by then. I'm not sure what cards, probably Prism again, because a lot of uh, American collectors and people not European will come into the market again. They buy what they recognize, which is Prism, which is Optic, which is Select. Uh, prices will go up and the more at the later stages in, in the tournaments, prices will continue to go up. And whenever we have a winner, prices will come back down. That's what uh, happened in the NBA playoffs. And I think it's going to be around the same uh, for the Euros. So it, I think it's going to explode again and it's going to come back down and it's going to st stabilize over time again until we have the next big tournament coming. Okay. Um, what do you what do you make to some of the Belgian players? Do, do, do you fancy Belgium to have a good a good tournament? Um, it's a <laughs> it's an interesting question. I I think as long as we have Lukaku, Mertens, and Kevin De Bruyne healthy, I'm not even mentioning Hazard because he hasn't been really a factor. No. Um, so as long as we have Kevin De Bruyne, Hazard, and Mertens, I would say we stand a chance to make it to the semis. Um, but I, I, I cannot see Belgium winning this Euros. Can you not? Who, who do you think will go further, Bel Belgium or, or England? I would still say Belgium, but I, I don't think either of them is going to make a deep run. Oh, who, who do you think might win it then? I'm, I'm, I'm still uh, debating between uh, France or Portugal. Those mm. are the two main ones for me. Um, yeah. They have the most experienced, look the more mature, have the I would say the overall more solid team. They have international tournament experience, Belgium as well, but they always seem to lose it some kind of way. England same, as well. Same, they have same. great players. Yeah, but they lose it some <laughs> kind of way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. And, and what about players that maybe don't feature in the tournament? So forgive me, actually. Is I, 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 I uh, Norway going to be there? So no. uh, they're not, are they? So, so what, what, what do you expect to happen to say Haaland's cards then? Will will they like, will they drop off because of the Euros, or will they be inflated even though he's not there? You know what I mean? What will happen with them? Um, I, I'm not sure if they're gonna drop in price. I I just think they're not gonna boom as much. Um, we we've seen that right now. He was injured, and I don't think their his prices really came down, even though he was injured. Um, so of course the attention is gonna be on a lot of different other other players, and I guess. If the price of the other cards will go up, maybe Holland's will go up as well because people are going to look at the market and say, how come Holland is, isn't as expensive at that period of time as, let's say, a Rashford card? Mm. So maybe people are going to look at the market and see him as undervalued and start to buy his cards up, which continue to raise the price. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he, him, him not being there is is a shame though. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just what it is. And I... it's. As, as I said, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the, the market right now. So I think it's very difficult to look into the future and try to put, anyone can predict something. Uh, but obviously, we have to wait and see. Mm. So you've mentioned then that you, you, you know, you, you kind of focused at the moment on vintage cards, which was going to be my, my next question. You know, what types of cards do you look for? You've said there that, and we've just spoken about the European Championships, and you don't want to, you know, it's hard to make those predictions. Because I was going to say, kind of, what does the future? Um, in 2021 look like for soccer cards but we've kind of ticked that off really it all depends on whether or not the European Championships go ahead right if they don't go yeah. ahead then well it's anyone's it's, it's anyone's guess but it's safe to say that the value of them will continue to rise just on the European Championships though um, do you think that that will evoke the interest from um, the United States if it coincides with NBA playoffs because you know the European Championships doesn't have the pull it has the pull to us because we're Europeans but does it have as much impact on uh, the Americans culturally, do you think? Um, of course, the, the World Cup is going to be much better in that perspective because America has a chance to make it. I mean, the USA national team. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess I guess it's going to continue. It's going to appeal to those people as well because soccer is growing in America. If Even if they don't want to admit it, it's growing. It's much more accessible as it used to be. Um, bigger players go to those leagues so i guess people have an incentive to watch why, why wouldn't you watch the second biggest international it's not even though soccer is not that huge or football is not that huge in in, in the united states 
there's there's not gonna be a, a way around it it's gonna be all on social media people will talk about it if you open youtube it will be there i i guess even even in the nba people will mention it i mean look at how uh lebron james right now is doing all these posts with mbappe so i i think it will be present at that time people will talk about it. people will hear hear about it and at the end of the day if you're if you're an investor if you're a flipper you you want to double in that so i guess it will have some kind of um attention from american collectors maybe not as much as the state uh, as the world cup but i think more people will come into into that because it's such a big tournament so I asked a question, or I've been asking questions on our Instagram page, Vincent. You may you may have seen mm-hmm. it, and um, I asked one today about uh, autograph cards. You know which which players people are currently seeking at the moment, and yep. then I asked one as well on Monday. But the, the question escapes me now. What it was that I asked. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is that I I get suggestions of like uh, uh, women's women's players and women's cards, um, and I know that you know the women's game actually women's soccer is probably bigger in the United States than it is in Europe, and it's growing <laughs> here. The interest is so. Are, are you? Uh, because I, I don't, I still don't see a lot of collectors talking about this on the whole of women's game. Do you yeah. f- foresee any kind of potential there? Are there any women's cards that you look for? Any players that you think actually they, they might have a bit of gravitas, you know, culturally and command a, a, a certain value or certain interest or not? I, I I'm, I, I, I can't say I, I do. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just, People are so stuck with men's football that I, I guess it's it's also because I guess it's not as relevant on television. It's not that you can watch every men uh, woman's soccer game. I might mm-hmm. be totally wrong, but at least in Belgium, we cannot just turn a television on and watch weekends uh, women's games or something. So for, for people in Belgium, it's only when the national team, the women's national team plays, we have that on television. But it's 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 harder to access the games itself. So I, I I don't collect it. I have actually no interest in collecting those kinds of cards. I mean, obviously there's if people want to do that, I think there is a market for it. But uh, I I can't say I'm I'm my, I'm very much interested in those cards now. No, no. I think I, I do wonder though the future in the in the future whether or not it will rise to to more prominence. Sure. I think. Um... I think, yeah, I mean, the men's game is so is is so dominant still culturally. Like it's yeah. just, when people talk about football, they do think about the men. <laughs> it it, it yeah. is change. It is changing here. There is a lot more interest in the women's game. I know Michael Everton put a lot of emphasis on on our women's team, but I just sure. wonder if say my little girl in the future when she grows up, whether or not she'll collect women's women's cards or not, or you that know, would like, be awesome it, though. Yeah, it would be. It would be really cool. Um, so it's just it's just something I think to to ponder. I think as as collectors, um, I'm certainly intrigued by it. Because as I say, I, you know, I, it, again, it's anecdotal, but I keep on getting suggestions like Lucy Bronze and stuff. I keep on getting these names thrown at me when I ask the questions and on our Instagram account. And I just think, mm, okay, maybe is there something is there something in that? So mm-hmm. we'll have to see how that 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 plays out really. Um, and and um, in terms of the men's game. You, meant, you mentioned Marcus Rashford, uh, who is, here in England is 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 making some real kind of noises off of the pitch. I don't know if you're aware of this so much yeah. over there, but he is he's taken sure. the the government to task in, in in Britain on on free school meals and has got a lot of plaudits for that. Um, yeah. He seems like a great guy, like a really nice guy. Um, you know, regardless of. Your, your, your politics or, or whatever he just seems sure. a, a nice guy a very competent footballer playing for potentially the biggest club <laughs> in the world are you enthusiastic about Marcus Rashford I know you're looking for vintage cards and he most definitely isn't vintage but are you are you trying to seek him out Vincent what's what's the situation with you and what other young players or players do you think have have, have a lot of potential moving forward yeah, Rashford is an interesting player. Um, it seems like he's been around forever, even though he's only 23. So it's crazy. You have some kind of... It's the same with Kane. It's, it's like you cannot imagine a game without Kane and he's only 27. It's just because they, they start so young and they feature so young in the first team that it's like he's only 23. Um, from from a um, collecting perspective, it's interesting you ask because I have a video coming out. I don't want to plug too much, but I have a video coming out. You talking plug about- away, Vincent. You've given us your time. You plug away. <laughs> I do have a video coming out talking about him. Um, so I'm, I'm, 
looking to buy some of his cards more uh, to sell again uh, during the Euros because uh, long term, I don't really have that much of a connection to Rashford. Uh, I do like other players like uh, Greenwood. I'm, I'm a very big fan of Greenwood. He had an amazing run last season. He has a bit of a dip this season. Uh, but I mean, sometimes people forget, I guess, he's still, what is he, 19, 20? It's, mm. it's still very early. And at the end of the day, it's still, people call him the, a kid. And p- kids make mistakes. People have to grow up. Um, but it's a long, it's a long, ter- it's a long term thing, you know. It's, I mean, look at Ronaldo; he's thirty five. That would mean Greenwood has another fifteen years if he if he makes it, it another fifteen years to build a career. Um, I also am a big fan of uh, the obvious one, Holland. Uh, I, I just, I, I just love the way he plays. He's so tall and yet he's so he uses his body on the in the perfect way and. He, He's in a perfect spot at Dortmund as well. It's just he fits his play style. It fits, it's just perfect for him. So those are two players I really like going into the future. Um, obviously not really from... I mean, Norway is not going to win a World Cup. Um, and Greenwood is probably not going to play for England. Or he might be on the bench or something. So uh, it's just players I like. Not, I'm not saying it's a great investment or go out and buy him. I just, I'm just, I just love those two. Mm. There is something, I think this is an area of that, again, we were talking before I hit record and I was saying now, I have kind of, um, I'm new to the industry and, and talking with you guys has kind of got me uh, infused about cards and, and, and I'm even thinking about them, obviously, you know, as, as, as marketing manager for, uh, for Futera, I'm, I'm solely focused on Futera cards, but it is exciting watching you guys, um, you know, seeking out these players and talking about these players in the future. And one that I think is a great prospect because I see him a lot, is Ben Godfrey at Everton. Um, I don't know if you know about him. We purchased him from Norwich, and I don't remember really seeing him at Norwich, and Nor- Norwich got relegated, but he has been yeah. fantastic for us. He's a centre-half by trade, and he plays. A- and he- we've played him, deployed him like, you know, across the back four. Uh, he's played at right back, he's played at left back, and, and I think he has played centre-half as well for, for a little bit. So, And, and he, looks very- he looks very astute and probably like captain material, so he's most definitely one to watch. Um I think in, in, in the future. Um, this is a question that I put to all of, of my guests, Vincent, and it's the first million pound, million dollar soccer card. Um, what do you think that could be? I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be the obvious one as well. I think it has to be a PLA card. Um, it's, it's, Sometimes I wonder if it's gonna be a super modern one because the money get that gets thrown around at one of, of some of these modern players like Rashford, like like uh, Joao Felix. These prices are sometimes hard for me to understand why you would pay so much money for a, a modern player. Because at the end of the day, if you talk about value and stuff like that, then I guess you have to go for a Pele. Um, so I'm gonna be again one of these boring guys and say. Billy. that that's the answer that i get frequently but that's because it's the, it is the it is, it's the high probability um yeah i i just i do i do always wonder though i think like given the significance of players like ronaldo and messi yeah. i do wonder like i don't know i just i don't know i mean I, gary i think i've seen gary v talking about like vintage pele cards and that he wants one and stuff so that's going to naturally inflate the price again but I just wonder, you know, because because players like Messi and Ronaldo, it's hard at the moment to fathom because they're currently playing. But when they retire, I think we're going to realise again, you know, just how phenomenal those footballs footballers were. So I do wonder if any of their cards may reach them if, heights. If if you think that one or one or the two, like Messi or Ronaldo, would get to one million, which one do you think will go first to a million, Messi or Ronaldo? And it's not that you think it's the best player; it's just which one of the two do you think will reach the, the one million first? What's going on here? I'm supposed to be asking you <laughs> the question. <laughs> you flip this around. You're not on card hour now. No, I'm joking. I'm, joking. Uh, I'm going to say Ronaldo because I think that, and the reason for that, it, again, the whole Ronaldo Messi debate, which one's better? It's like, I always say it's like comparing a Porsche to a Ferrari. I mean, yeah, yeah, I agree. What you, but <laughs> I, I, do, I do think that Ronaldo, cult, I keep on using this word because it's important, I think, is culturally, I think he's had a bigger impact than Leo Messi. I think, here's, here's the question. 
if I go in there, my missus, right, my wife despises football, which is terrible <laughs> for her because she lives with me and her family are all big football fans, right? So, and my family are. So when we all get together and me and my sister, my sister's a big Chelsea fan. Incidentally, we're arguing nice. about football, whatever. Um, I'm telling her Frank Lampard's going to get sacked. <laughs> She's telling me that if that happens, they're going to take Carlo Ancelotti off. It's that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. They're going to take Ancelotti back. But my, my, my wife goes, oh, she despairs. But anyway, if I go in there now and I say to my wife, uh, do you know who Leo Messi is? She might say, maybe, but not, maybe not. She might have seen him pop up on social media or whatever, but she knows who Cristiano Ronaldo is. There you go. That just shows you the cultural impact of those players. <laughs> so to answer your question, I would say Cristiano Ronaldo, if, if it was going to be out of those. Sure. Do you agree? Yeah, I, th I think he's much more um, recognized on social media. Obviously, if you're in the world, you know who Messi is. But as you just said, if you go to a random guy on the street, they, they're probably going to know Cristiano Ronaldo more than they're going to know Messi, I would say. So yeah. I think... I think I think you're right. If 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 it's one or the other two, I would go for Ronaldo as well. I think as well because Ronaldo's played in different countries, whereas Messi hasn't yet. Maybe he might do. Maybe he might come over <laughs> to England. But there's just something yeah. about Ronaldo. Like he has he has everything. Like with respect to Messi, he's he's not as. <laughs> not as visually pleasing to the opposite <laughs> sex I don't yeah, think yeah. like Ronaldo even to yeah. men I mean you know men who aren't that way that, that way inclined you know I, I as a straight guy like I admire Ronaldo like he I can see why the opposite sex adore yeah. him like he is True. he's he's incredible he's he's got it all he's got it all and you know you can pop him on the front of a Calvin Klein advert and then he can go and play up front for Juve like you know an hour <laughs> later. Like he can do it all and he can and the thing is about Ronaldo I, I don't want to you know I know with this with the intention of this podcast wasn't to get into the Ronaldo <laughs> Messi debate but for me I'm sorry that's on me that's, that's cool, man. It's a, it's, it is an interesting topic. But another thing, though, about Ronaldo is you can play Ronaldo anywhere. Like, you could play Ronaldo. I mean, you could probably play Messi at centre-off, but Ronaldo is probably going to do a better job at centre-off. You can play him at centre -off. You could play him everywhere. Like, he's yeah. just... He's incredible. He's incredible. But they're both two phenomenal footballers. Um, okay, final question from me. Uh, we'll do this again, though, because I've enjoyed talking to you. Um, if you were... Let's pretend the terrorists sack me uh, for my comments on this podcast about Leo Messi <laughs> uh, not being as visually pleasing to the opposite sex as Ronaldo, right? I've been sacked for that now. And they say, Vincent, you were in that conversation. You, you led him down that path. However, you knew, you know more about him than, than soccer cards. So you come and work for Butera. What would you do in, in, in my position as, as marketing manager of, of Butera? It's a good question. Um, I think I would, I would make a rookie card set, but only one. Um, it's not, sorry, Tops. It's not like Tops is doing right now. Like Mukoko had four rookie rookie cards printed in three weeks' time. One for being the youngest guy in the Bundesliga. One for just stepping on the field, being the youngest guy. One for an assist. One for. Uh, being the youngest Champions League guy. I mean, it, it keeps coming. Every t People make fun of it on, on Instagram as well. As soon as he does something, scores, gives an assist, you see countless of Instagram stories like, yeah, there's going to be another tops one. And it actually happens all the time. Like, I, I would just stick the RC logo or call one card a rookie card, and that's the card to get. It is, there's, there's, coming, there's more coming but only that one is going to get an RC logo. So yes. people rec recognize that that's the RC. Um, I think that's, that's the first thing I would do, actually, that people recognize which card to get. So people will look after it. Yeah. Yeah, I on on that just I I I'm, I must um, interject here because uh, I've had this I've had this raised to me on another podcast and and uh, I had to say to that guest I can't remember who it was now but I did say you know we we do have a a rookie set planned specifically yeah. and, and we'll be we'll That's be nice. able to uh, you know we'll be able to talk more about this it's not been finalised I can't give you any more details unfortunately sure. but it, but it is on the radar for us and we we are aware of that. Um, and I think, you know, on that, what, what Tops are doing there, again, speaking candidly, and, 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 and I don't work for Tops, so, you know, I, I can't, I can't sure. too much detail of their, their, their rationale there. But I think, you know, 
at the moment there's a lot of there's a lot of desire for people to get cards people just want cards and i think as manufacturers yeah. and we've had this conversation internally we need to be careful uh you know as to not just go completely gung-ho and flood the market and then you know and, and as you say sure. and then almost like devalue the the the, the the what it means to be a rookie you know um yeah. so anyway we're, we're very conscious of that i'm sure every company's approaching it in different ways is, is if you sound like you have something else Vincent. that you wanted you had, you had another recommendation for me there or not yeah yeah sure um I, and I think I think I, I'm not sure how the process works. Obviously, I don't work for for a company. Uh, just use visually appealing pictures. Um, if if you look at the 2019 EPL Prism Abomayang, I'm not sure if you can if you know exactly what car I'm talking about right now. But if if you look it up, you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. The card the guard the card is so ugly. You just don't wanna don't wanna buy it, even though you might might like Abomayang, you might like the sit. It's, it's just such an ugly looking picture of Abomayang that you would just decide not to buy it because of that. I think, as I said, I don't know what the process is like of selecting the images for these cards, but I, I have to imagine that you, you get to choose between different pictures of the player and then they get stamped on. I, I just, I don't know why people or companies would use such a ugly images. So <laughs> I think um, for me, that would be a reason not to buy that card, just because the image looks bad. Um, I, think, I think there's a couple of things on that. So first of all, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Sure. Um, there sure. is that. No, no, I, I get it. But sometimes you can just look at an image and go, that's not a great image. I think secondly, sure. at, being on this side of the fence, so when we work with the clubs, we have to get mm -hmm. the, the images signed off by by those those clubs, of course. And sure. then, you know, we're kind of, we're, to a certain extent, you know, we have to go with the images that they say that we can use. And then sometimes, sure. Vincent, you know, it, it isn't always easy to find the greatest image of a, of a player, actually. I'm, I'm not sure, sure about that one because I'm sure there's lots of images of Aubameyang. But as you go further <laughs> back in history, you know, when we yeah. did our mythical set, which is something that you would you would like um, uh, in, in, the, in the past, you know, uh, me and Mark, Mark and I were talking about this the other day, actually, on, on, on the intro to another podcast that will be published soon with Steve from the Football Stuff. We were talking about, he, he's saying it, it, was, it, was, it was an iconic player from like the 20s. So the mythical set that we did was, um, was actually a virtual set uh, when I worked on it, I'm not sure if one came later that was a printed one. Uh, the guys, well, we, yeah, at the set that I'm thinking of specifically, we have done sets similar to this in the past, but it was purely a virtual one back in the day. And, um, and, and, and there was an, in, we, we accidentally, I think Mark was saying that he accidentally used Stanley Matthews uh, for an image of someone else. Because back in like the 20s, the era that you're interested into now, in the 30s, but there weren't lots of images of players. So the sure. point I'm making there is sometimes it can be problematic to identify a great image and then be able to use it. That's another thing as well. Um, sure, it also has to do with taste at the end of the day. And with these older, and with these older cards, I mean, I, I totally get it, but... For me, it's it's hard to believe that there was no better image of him. I'm just giving him as an example because that's the one that stands out for me. Yeah, I I, I understand it's not always as easy, and you have to. There's a lot of different licenses and regulations, and it's back and forth communication between the clubs. I, I get it. It's not that easy to just go out and say I want that image on that card. I, I get it. I just I'm just talking overall. Just try to make as a eye appealing cards as possible that's that's maybe a bit of way. Yeah, yeah no of course, of course. i think one thing that i, I would say I, I never try and um you know use these uh use these podcasters like a martin pitch purely the reason why we do <laughs> soccer cars and chill is one to it's great sure. to speak to people who collect cards and it's a good education for me and also i hope it's a value to collectors that they're the two main things but what I, what I what i what i always would say is as an advocate of futurities i do feel like our cards are quite visually a, a, a pleasing you know i know that sure. you know gwyneth and mark they spend a lot of time thinking about what the cards are going to look like and we pride ourselves on that quality you know yep. and 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 uh the foiling that we use and the you know the the the, the uniqueness of our cards that um you know the fact that collectors can know exactly exactly how many of those cards have been printed, you know, all these little kind of things. So we do yeah. try and put a lot of effort in there. But I think sometimes, it's, you know, what happens is when it's like when you're producing any product, what you may find beautiful, sure. the next guy <laughs> might be like, that is a disgrace, I'm not buying that. <laughs> um, and then they'll tweet me and say, you're a disgrace, I'm not buying that. Uh, which, I, <laughs> you know, hopefully I don't get too many of those tweets. But uh, look, mate, it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you. I really enjoyed it. Your English is tremendous. 
as I said, I live in England. I speak to English people all the time and you are probably (laughs) better at English than me and 90% of the population. So well done for that. Uh, Where can people, where can people find your, your stuff? Uh, it's on YouTube, it's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, it's all the same. It's at Card Hour, so it's easy to find. Yeah, it's great. I watched your uh, your your um, your goals for 2021 video earlier, and uh, nice. I've got them all written down, and I will hold you to account on those goals. Uh, Good. And, Good. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's great stuff. I've got to I've got to say, guys, you know, get over and make sure you subscribe and 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 like. I don't actually do this enough with the guys that I get on, but I do watch all of your stuff before you come on, and it's always great, and it's very good for me as well, being new to this industry, because I just want to learn and learn and learn and make sure that you know we we perfect the art as much as we can here at Futera. Uh, so it's, it's fantastic for your time, mate. Thank you for, um, for talking to us and uh, I'll see you again next time on Soccer Cards and Chill. Thanks for having me. Okay, welcome back to the final part of Soccer Cards and Chill. Uh, that was my conversation with Vince from Card Hour. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to leave us a comment underneath if you've got any anything you want to say. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on, on the various podcast apps that you can find us on now, remember to leave us a review as well because that's brilliant and uh, we, we, really do, uh, we really do appreciate that. So, Mark, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the cards that we've... we've um, we have produced historically. This came off the back of the conversation I had uh, last night cool. with the guys over at the um, the Soccer Cards United podcast. I think I sense that collectors have always been intrigued by some of the things that we've done. You know, one of the fir- I think the first company to, to use gold plated cards that was quite radical. Um, you know, diamonds in our cards. Where does this come from, Mark? Why do we do this stuff? Um, it's it's that push from us to always create something that's mind blowing. Like it's really important to us to, I keep on saying this and it is so true. It sounds like a cliche now, but we do this because we want to have fun and we want things to be great. And we want to produce stuff that we really love. Um, Gone are the days of sort of enjoying putting out mass market, huge amounts of stuff out there. There's, there isn't that much enjoyment in that anymore for us. What we really love is putting out products that, blows our minds that we love you know sometimes when you put out a product that it's got to be a sense of real achievement when you've done it and gold cards cards with diamonds in etc always make us smile like it's as simple as that i can't I, there's not some kind of magic science behind it that we decided though that everybody's going to love gold cards it's just that we wanted to try it out we wanted to see if we could do it and we've really pushed that technology over the years just keep on pushing it and like the designs become even more intricate and as you said putting diamonds on cards like who would ever thought of that it's really like when somebody says to me because there's still people out there amazingly that don't know really what the trading card industry is about and they'll say to me what do you do mark i say oh we make trading cards and they were like oh like pokemon etc and i was like yeah it's sort of but like sort of our cards are sometimes made out of gold and they've got diamonds in them and that's the bit that people go, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, what do you mean they've got gold and diamonds in? It's, um, I just love that side of it. And I know that like Gwyneth does as well. We're both on the same page. And whenever somebody comes in and works with us, the first thing they want to see is these gold cards. It's, it's just become something that's very Futera. And um, I just really enjoy it. And I hope that the collectors do as well. I know that a lot of collectors have never actually had one in hand. And normally when you get a collector who actually picks up the card and sees the weight of it and just sees sort of how much work goes into those um, frames, uh, which are really difficult to design. As someone who's designed them in the past, these are not easy. You've got to think of so many things to be able to do it. And um, when somebody sees it for the first time, I just like seeing their face because they are spectacular in my opinion. I'm, I'm sure there's people out there that, don't like them they like the real traditional side of trading cards but for me i've just always loved the gold cards they uh they just become a bit special i think jason rather apologetically um and he did say this like he was very coy about this but we were talking about when i coined the term um an alt trading card company which i just did instinctively and then thought after oh i don't know if, if Gwyneth is going to appreciate that. But, no, it's a bit I of a mean, strange it, way of describing this, but it, we'll go with it. <laughs> it, it, it. It is, but but I think no, but I think there is something in it though. I don't. I, I think that because because we do these type of cards, we we are yeah. we are. I, 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 I get you know we are a, a bit of a departure from the trading card norm. 
right? We just are, and that's cool, and that's why certain people love us. Um, and we've had collectors. I mean, it must it must hey, it must resonate with someone, Mark, because we've had collectors that have collected a few tarot cards from the word go, and we've yeah, got yeah, that's. That, about with those relationships you know the fact that Gwen will will go Gwyneth will go and actually you know sit down and she's and you and her have met a lot of these collectors and stuff like that's quite unique but uh, Jason referred to us as a, a bit of a hipster brand but he said he he, he like he, that he, he, he was worried that. about some, well that's what I mean he, he kind of but he wasn't because sometimes that can be used as an insult but I, I don't see it that way at all because it implies no. that you are radical and, and different and I think we are right I, I like it. I, I, I think we said before we're like the Times New Roman of trading cards, and that's sort of how I see it—the hipster brand of trading cards. I like it. Like if that means that we do things a bit differently and we sort of go off in our own tangent sometimes, yeah. And it, it's because we do something that we love, and we feel that if we love it, there's going to be other people out there that love it. And I know that. I know we've spoken to people before, and they've sort of said, "Oh, I, we've not seen your gold cards." I want them to actually pick them up and see these cards because um, maybe we haven't done a good enough job in the past of actually getting this stuff out there. So that would be good for um, some of the guys that have done the podcasts, et cetera, to actually see some of the cards and we'll sort something out with that. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's, it's just a fact that they make me smile. They make Gwyneth smile and they make a lot of people that collect Futera cards smile. It's when you open a pack and you've gone through and you've seen this card, this card, this card, and then you've got this incredible gold plated card and it is it's 24 karat gold plated framed card in your hand it's just yeah it's just immense it, it looks incredible it is, it so, is. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's great. i've noticed that the uh, parcel force guys in this is probably a few terror orientated <laughs> let's, let's wrap this episode up quickly before he knocks on the door uh, <laughs> thank you for watching the cards and chill thanks to, to vince for coming on uh, i will see you again next time on the episode remember to like share subscribe i'm on important to know about enjoy your day, day adam take care mate bye <laughs>